you may have heard David Hogue, who was one of the survivors of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida, recently got accepted to Harvard University with a 1270 SAT score. This story has hit the news and a lot of people have been up in arms about it. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is just kind of clarify some points of the story from the perspective of somebody who works in college admissions, and also give you guys a few takeaways of lessons that you can learn from his story to apply to your own lives. Before we get started, I wanna remind everyone to subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe below this video. It's totally free. We have lots of fun tips for college admissions, test prep, all that good stuff. We also have a complete course for the SAT and the ACT available at supertutortv.com. So if you're looking to get the best SAT or ACT score possible, I've scored perfectly on both exams as an adult and helped coach students to a perfect score on the ACT and perfect scores on individual sections of the SAT. So go check that out. The other thing I will say is we have a mailing list. You can sign up for that at supertutortv.com slash subscribe. We'll keep you posted if we have any deals, any new releases of any materials, of any new products, etc. We will keep you in the loop. So sign up there. Cool. So let's talk. For those of you who don't really know who David Hogue is and you're like, who is this anyway? What happened is he was present during the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. It had more fatalities than any other school shooting in US history with 17 killed and 17 more injured. Basically, he helped launch and he was probably the most visible leader that came out of that school to help form a student group that began to fight for more gun control in Florida and nationwide. Just to recap some of his accomplishments in the last year, he's traveled across the United States to get out the youth vote and call for more gun control, raising over a million dollars with a foundation that was created in the wake of this incident. He's amassed hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. He wrote a book with his sister. He's had numerous speaking engagements, including at Harvard. So that is kind of his story. But through this course, his own academic standing has been one of the stories that he's shared on his Twitter feed. So all of this goes back to last spring when a couple of months after the shooting, he tweeted about how he was rejected from numerous schools, including Cal State Long Beach, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, and UC San Diego. Then these articles go on to say, but he was accepted by Harvard without explaining that he did this in two different admission cycles. So the rejection letters came from his admissions during the normal admission cycle of his senior year because he was a senior when this incident happened. So he had already turned in all of those applications, all the UC applications at least, by December 1st of 2017. And then this incident happened February 14th of 2018. And then usually decision letters come out in March or sometimes April. So he was finding this stuff out in March, a month after the shooting happened, but his application had probably already been reviewed before anybody even knew who he was. So then he was admitted to UC Irvine, but decided to take a gap year. So when getting into Harvard, it's not like he got into Harvard with his application before any of this happened. He got in after all of this happened because what's happened is he's become essentially a leader in a political activism movement. And that's the wow factor that got him into Harvard, obviously. It wasn't necessarily his SAT score and it wasn't his GPA. And by the way, if you're wondering what it takes to get into Harvard, 92 plus percent of Harvard students had a 3.75 or greater on an unweighted scale. His GPA that's been published is a weighted GPA, which I've seen reported as a 4.1, and then I've also seen it reported as a 4.2. My guess is that he had a different GPA maybe when he submitted his final senior year grades. Maybe it went up to a 4.2. And the 25th percentile on the reading and writing is a 730, and the 75th percentile is a 790. The 25th percentile on the SAT math is a 730, and the 75th percentile is an 800. You add those two 25th percentiles together, which isn't even the composite 25th percentile, by the way, because a lot of times kids who are in the 25th percentile on one might be in a higher percentile on the other, but that would be a 1460. So thinking that, that the 25th percentile at Harvard is probably at least a 1460 and probably higher, to get in with a 1270 is 190 point difference. So you can see that that's a significant difference. But I think the bottom line is that obviously his GPA and his test scores without this incident in his life and without all the activism that he did was not enough to get him into a great school. 
So let's talk about what lessons you can learn from his story. I think the first lesson is sometimes you can't control your opportunity. It's unthinkable to even imagine putting yourself at the center of a school shooting. That's terrible. It's a terrible event that happened. It's not a good thing to have students' lives taken away. That's completely unfair. That situation for David Hogue in a large part has played into his ability to get into Harvard. Had he not been in that situation at the wrong place at the right time, he would not have been as visible as he was. And I think the chances of him getting to Harvard would have been pretty much nil. If we zoom out and we think about this in more broad terms, I think what it means for all of you guys out there is like not everybody has the same opportunity. Sometimes that's, you know, being around an event that sparks national media attention and you can ride the wave of that. But sometimes that means you don't have that. Sometimes that means you're stuck in the middle. You don't have, you know, a sob story that's so incredible that you've overcome. But at the same time, you don't have wealth or power or a rich parent or a dad who's president or whatever it is that helps you get into college that way. So if you don't have an advantage on either side of the spectrum, an advantage that comes from disadvantage or an advantage that comes from advantage, and you feel like you're stuck in the middle, you know, sure, that might play into why you're not accepted to a college, but don't take it personally. If anything, like be thankful that you didn't have to live through a terrible situation like that. In any case, a lot of why people get in has to do with factors that like maybe they can't control and certainly you can't control. But that brings me to my second point, which is you can look at the opportunity that you do have and you can make the most of it. Not every kid at this Parkland High School was offered admission to Harvard. The person who was, was a person who stood up and became a leader and amassed hundreds of thousands of followers and struck while the iron was hot, so to speak. I think the question that you have to ask yourself is how can you take advantage of opportunities that you do have? How can you speak out? How can you make a difference? Always be listening in your world to ways you can make a difference. Do you see a problem in the world around you that you think could use fixing? It might not be as visceral, as intense, or as media buzzy as what happened to David, but whatever has happened to you, how can you leverage your opportunity in front of you? And to me, when I say opportunity, what I actually mean is problems in the world around you that you can solve. So my challenge to you, if you want to get into a great school, is be the leader that you can be, given the opportunity that you have. So then my third lesson that you can learn from David Hook's story is colleges can't read your mind. If something happens to you, or if you have more impressive factors, or if you believe you deserve to be at that school and you have good evidence that wasn't a part of your application, you need to let them know, or they're not gonna magically know about it. And you never know what's gonna happen. You can write them a letter, you can write them an email, and say, hey, this happened to me, or hey, I'm doing this, or hey, I created this. And if you have made a real difference in your world, I think that's something that's worth talking about um, and letting colleges know. That's all I've got on this video. If you've got comments, feel free to leave them below. Let us know what kind of videos you wanna have from us. What do you wanna hear? What do you wanna know? Let us know in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.